All right, so this is an interesting thing. I, I don't know much about this. You were telling me about the, the murders. Where were they? So there was a gentleman named Michael Silka who basically came up to Alaska. I'm not quite, I don't quite remember what his motivations were or if they were ever really known. Mm -hmm. But he basically went on a rampage up around Manly Hot Springs and oh, killed Manly Hot Springs. several people. Uh -huh. And there was a big manhunt by the uh, state troopers. And so the, the reason I know about this mm. uh, is because the, the trooper, there was, there was a little bit of a, a shootout with Michael Silka there on the banks of the, the, the river there, uh, Manly Hot Springs. Mm -hmm. And the trooper that uh, shot and killed uh, the suspect, uh, I actually have trained with him. He was a firearms instructor. Uh, he came here and, and trained us on uh, several different weapon systems. Uh, he is a big, uh, Jeff Hall is his name. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a big proponent of 1911s. He, he oh, kind of, yeah, nice. he, he converted me to the church of 1911. Okay. Uh, ever since I, I had the 1911 uh, class with him, that's basically what I carried uh, in my career. Nice. And uh, he also taught, uh, I went through a uh, select fire course with him uh, mm -hmm. for, for rifles. But uh, he's a very interesting, I mean, if you ever get a chance to sit down and talk to him, he's a very interesting gentleman. He actually, the, the shooting that occurred at Manly Hot Springs, he was actually in a helicopter. Mm. So he uh, shot and accurately hit a, a gentleman while he was in a moving helicopter, wow. a stationary target on the ground, uh, which is difficult. Uh, right. you know, it's, it's harder than it seems. And uh, the trooper next to Jeff Hall actually was hit and, and killed um, oh, wow. during that shootout. Yeah, it's a, it's a very it's a tragic event. Like um, he shot up into the helicopter? And... He was shooting the helicopter, wow. and he hit uh, Jeff's partner, who's, I'm sorry to say, I can't remember his name at, at, right now, but I believe he got hit in the neck, oh, and he bled out uh, while Jeff was engaging uh, with the target and, and, and neutralizing the suspect. And yeah, it's just, you know, Alaska is such a, it's a big estate, but it's a mm -hmm. small state. And yeah. especially, you know, law enforcement's a smaller community of that small mm -hmm. state. And it's amazing when you uh, start talking to people and meeting people in that, in that circle and, and, you know, you never know who you're going to meet up with. Um, when I was in the academy, there was a gentleman that came and was teaching a class. And uh, I remember, you know, he, it was a really good class. I was really engaged. And later on, I was reading the book Butcher Baker, which is about right. uh, Robert Hansen, the serial killer uh, that mm -hmm. was up here in Alaska. I believe they made the Frozen Ground movie about him. Mm -hmm. And I'm reading the Butcher Baker book, and I see a name, and I'm like, I know that guy. Like, he came to the academy and taught a class for us. So it's a very mm -hmm. small, tight-knit community in law enforcement. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's a famous uh, event up here, uh, the Manly Hot Springs murders. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I was fortunate enough to, to get to spend some time with Jeff Hall and, and take some of his classes that he offered. And uh, it's, it's funny, you know, just getting to spend, you know, some downtime with him and talking to him because I, um, in my career, I was an investigator. You know, mm -hmm. I, I was like the detective for my department. And that was what intrigued, that's what I liked about law enforcement. That was the part that drew me. I like solving mysteries. I like puzzles mm -hmm. and stuff. And talking to Jeff, you know, I was telling him, I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, I I was working a homicide. You know, I, I got on and like in my first couple of months, I had to work a homicide. And I was just like, oh, this is awesome. This is the greatest. And his experience was quite opposite. He's like, oh, I don't like that. I don't like that. He's like, I want to kick doors and, you know, I, I want to get into the stuff. You know, I want right. to get into the mix. And I was like, well, I, I don't mind that. But I want to I want to solve crimes. I want to do the investigation stuff. And he's like, no, nope, I want to be the SWAT guy. And I was like, I want to be the detective. Uh, so you know, he's a cool guy, and uh, I'm fortunate I got to spend some time with him. Yeah. So what what was the deal with the murder? Did he he just kind of snap or? I believe uh, he was one of those gentlemen that just kind of wanted to disappear into the into the wild mm -hmm. and i believe uh and i could be I, I could be mistaken here but i think he was uh killing people and stealing their supplies oh okay uh he might have been i think he might have been on the run for some other crimes or something he committed mm -hmm. somewhere else and if i remember correctly he was murdering people and, and taking their supplies so that he could stay hidden and live longer but of course you know 
I think it was four people he murdered at Manly. Maybe it was more. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it was a it's an interesting case. I'm surprised. Actually, yeah. kind of surprised there hasn't been a, a movie or a show about it. Yeah, no, I, I hadn't. I had heard a little bit about it, but I didn't know the details. But um, I have heard that. Uh, Serial killers, criminals, murderers kind of end up in Alaska because it's like the end of the road, very rural, and people come up here to get away. So I always tell people to, you know, arm yourself because of bears, but also when you're out in the wild because of that. I mean, is that kind of a thing? Yeah, I, you know, I'm always more leery of people I meet in the woods than I am of anything else. Um, yeah. You know, if you run into an animal... I mean, you know what you're going to get, right? Yeah. You know, uh, the animal is either going to be aggressive or it's not. And you're either going to go, you know, you're going to go your way and the animal's going to go it, or it's mm -hmm. not and you're going to have a confrontation. Uh, and with people, you never really know what you're going to get. You know, somebody might yeah. walk up to you and, hi, how you doing? You know, like, right. let's walk together for a while. And then they, sh you know, hurt you or, you know, harm right. you. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I think that. Alaska being the, the final frontier, I think you get people that want to come up here and disappear. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the reasons why you get so many missing people reports up here is yeah. people will say, oh, my so-and-so uh, brother, cousin, whatever, uh, you know, said he was going up to Alaska and I haven't heard from him. And, and mm -hmm. some of that's by design. They don't want to be found. Right. Yeah, one of the interesting cases I remember, um, I had a cousin that was actually a trooper and uh, was there when they got him, but it was up in, uh, boy, it really messed up the the village. It was up um, kind of by off Kotzebue, the village of Kiana. Um, some like fancy hunter guy came up here and he brought like a 16 year old kid and um, the kid just snapped and started like shooting local hunting guides. Jeez. Yeah, and this was like in the, in the 80s or 90s or something and um, Finally, when they realized what was going on, the troopers came up and, you know, brought their plane and the, you know, the kid was a coward. He wasn't going to, you know, shoot it out with them. And he just like started walking with his hands up. Um, yeah. But just really bizarre. I don't know if there's something in the air or something out here that just makes people snap sometimes. Yeah. It's, well, there's a, a rather infamous gentleman from down in Idaho that, I can't remember if it, he killed one or two game wardens. Mm -hmm. And he did um, many years in, in prison and got released. And he's up here now. Oh, uh, wow. He, he, he's living up here uh, somewhere, I, th I believe, in some kind of uh, uh, like a, what is it, a sovereign citizen compound or something, I, I believe was the last oh, I wow. heard. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly where, but, <clears throat> you know, it, it, there's an attraction. You know, I think mm -hmm. people think they're going to get up here and they're going to be left alone if they can yeah. get out in the woods far enough. Yeah, I would agree with you though. I think um, you should stay armed in the in the woods of Alaska and the mountains, uh, not only because of bears, but probably even more so because of, you know, the humans you right run into. Yeah, so. you never know, yeah. you know, and that's, that's the, you know, that's one of the biggest uh, mistakes that, that people think is that it's not gonna happen to me, mm -hmm. uh, you know, or, Hopefully it never does, yeah. uh, but sometimes, sometimes it does. And, yeah. you know, we usually read about those people in the obituaries. All right, I'm here with Rob Roy Menzies, and he's got the shop remodeled, and it looks amazing. Very it does. It's awesome. I love open it. Open and clean looking. Very nice. Oh, it was a lot of work, but it was definitely worth it. This, this place needed a facelift, that's for sure. Yeah, so it come out great. to Palmer. The Bigfoot Art Gallery in Palmer, Alaska. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a busy summer, I think, for It you. is going to be a busy summer. I hope the weather's nice, too. Absolutely. So, looking forward to our camping trips. Oh, man. We've already got them planned. Yep. So, so we're talking about, when I met with Beans, we talked about uh, the Manly Springs murders that he mm -hmm. investigated. And then we just started talking about Alaska seems to bring in some pretty nefarious people because we're, you know, an outlier. Right. And then we got people going missing and, and yeah. you know, serial killers or just killers. Yeah. And then the whole Bigfoot. Yeah, on top of that. To on make top of that, funner, yeah. What, but, what do you think? Well, it is true. Yes, Bigfoot uh, Alaska is a, is a uh, 
course we all know it's very popular. It's gotten even more popular. So just people come up here. Um, you know, it is a big, big state and it's rough. And if you're not coming up here prepared, yeah, it, it doesn't take long to get hurt or fall into a creek and you yeah. know disappear. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, that happens a lot. And uh, you know, like I was saying before, you you don't realize how many people go missing up here until you kind of look into it. Yeah. Um, it kind of goes unnoticed until you start looking at all the billboards and what. Even in Walmart. Yeah. Go in there, and I was shocked to see all these missing people. Oh boy. Uh, a lot for every age too, all ages. Wow. Um. Wow. I. I Man, but uh, every once in a while we get somebody that goes missing and it makes the headlines, like the, the Seward race got, you know, Seward. Oh, yeah. He went missing. That was That's still a mystery. No um, trace. Uh, a guy from Texas out, out at uh, Girdwin went missing, too. They never found him. Mm -hmm. These are just a few I know of. I don't, you know, yeah. I don't, I'm not really looking for the, the missing 411 stuff, but I'm interested in it. If I right. hear about it, I'm like, ooh, all ears. Um. I think a lot of it is is inexperience and yeah. risk takers. I think so. Um, certainly there could be some people. I mean, we get some crazy people that come up that are ready to just snap, and they, they see yeah. Alaska as an opportunity to get away or, you know, uh, escape. Right. Um, and I think, you know, you have that little niche, too, of people coming up here to escape. And, you know, they don't come up prepared. They're not, they, they don't understand the weather. They don't understand... Um, the difficulty in the terrain around here and yeah. they can box themselves in pretty fast right and things go wrong uh yeah you know boy i've been camping here pretty much my whole life and i've never had any issues but it's usually because i'm you know we, we we're camping at a camp and we don't yeah. really take a lot of risks and right and of course we're getting older now too so we'll leave yep. all the risk taking for the younger guys right <laughs> but uh yeah, I don't know. I, it, it's it's an interesting thing, and Bigfoot certainly comes to play because that's kind of the first thing you you think of when people yeah. are missing on um, unusual circumstances. Right. Um, nobody saw him go. You know, you kind of wonder is something snatching these. It's like something snatching these th these people. Right. Um, certainly, there are the you know people can step into something and disappear into a crevice or yeah. Uh, glaciers are are you know notorious for killing people yep um you know that when the whole ground just falls there's nothing you can really do terrifying um but i've known some people that have fell, fallen in glaciers and survived wow but it was an all-day you know ordeal to get them out oh man um pretty interesting um so yeah you you've got to be really careful here for sure yeah all right well thank you sir yeah and that takes me to Bigfoot, of course. Um, I've kind of felt like the Bigfoot up here is a little bit less friendly than the Bigfoot in California and Washington. What, what do you think about that? Uh, I, I tend to agree, but I think a lot of it is because we have such a wide expanse of area. I don't mm -hmm. think they're as used to human interactions as maybe the Bigfoot in the lower 48, okay. where it's a little bit more congested Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you might have a little bit of more choke points between civilization, uh, between towns and such, where they mm -hmm. uh, see people. And up here, it's a little different story where maybe they might go years uh, without seeing people. And then they do, and it aggravates them because of a territorial issue or whatever it might be. Right. Uh, basically, they're like, there goes the neighborhood. There's people here. And, you know, we got to get them out of here. So that mm -hmm. might account for some of the aggressive encounters that uh, you hear about up here. Yeah. Um Boy, one story that really stood out is uh, I had a buddy that lived in some village outside of Bethel, and he was telling me all these stories about the hairy man, and um, there was this newspaper up there that was uh, the, the Delta something. That, Delta Discovery. Delta Discovery, yeah, mm -hmm. and they had articles on it. But one of the stories he said um, that a, a Bigfoot ripped somebody's dog in half. And yeah. that just, I mean, you got to be mean to do that or rip a dog in yeah. it. Like, well, there's a, in you know, there's a, I think there's a precedent for that. I mean, you've got, you know, what are dogs? They're just, they're little wolves, you know, yeah. they're, they're, they're from wolves. And, yeah. you know, I don't think Bigfoot can make the distinction between uh, a house, you know, a, a domesticated dog and a wolf, probably a dog, right. a wolf, a dog is a dog to a Bigfoot. A, a dog yeah. is a wolf to a Bigfoot. And I think that. Probably, you know, you see a lot of dogs 
uh, you know, they're they're aggressive toward the Bigfoot because mm -hmm. they're protecting their owner or their property or whatever. And yeah. the Bigfoot just sees a wolf. And I'm sure there's a lot of competition in the wild between Bigfoot and wolves for prey. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's it's not no surprise to me that, that Bigfoot displays uh, aggressive behavior towards dogs. Uh, personally, I, I, I don't really take my dogs. Sometimes I'll take my dogs out when I go camping and stuff. But mm -hmm. if I do, I usually keep them on a pretty close leash and don't yeah. let them, like, wander around. Uh, if I'm going to be squatching, then I definitely keep a close eye on them and mm -hmm. and don't let them run around free. But um, yeah, I think that probably it's it's just you know a Bigfoot doesn't know the difference between a dog and a wolf, and yeah, they've got that competition going on out in the in the woods. And I'm sure there's probably been many wolves killed by Bigfoot, and there's probably been many Bigfoot killed by wolves yeah. over over the years. That's true. But the story from across the bay here. Boy, it just seemed like that those Bigfoot in that area were just kind of sinister. Yeah, I think that a lot of that had to do with resources okay. because you had the logging, you had the fishing, and it's just kind of the perfect storm, I, I feel, in my opinion, for a Bigfoot or a troop of Bigfoot to just be like, this is enough, mm -hmm. um, and, and maybe get aggressive with the humans. Uh, plus, you know, we're on the southern tip of the peninsula, there's not really anywhere else to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, that, you know, there, there's to the uh, east of that is, is the Harding Ice Field. Mm -hmm. uh, so it might not be a situation where the Bigfoot feel like, yeah, okay, we'll just go, we're just going to move, you know, right. to the next area over. Uh, they might feel like they have had no, they're like, there's nothing but ice over there. Um, yeah. We've got to do something. Interesting. I don't think uh, people realize how uh, just treacherous this landscape is. And I mean, you can go hundreds of miles and there's n there's no people there. Uh, some areas are so hard to get to that I, I feel only uh, a military he helicopter crew. They're the only ones that can get into certain areas. And there's some areas they wouldn't even be able to land. Like they'd have to lower somebody down on a rope. Yeah. So, I mean, that and that's a lot of areas yeah. like that. Well, I mean, just, you know, we're here in my little subdivision, uh, mm -hmm. but if you go a little bit further north, I mean, you could start, you could start walking and you could probably walk for the rest of your life and never see another person if you get up in the Caribou Hills yeah. back there and just keep walking. Yeah. Um, and it's just vast. And a lot mm -hmm. of people, especially people in the little 48, don't realize. Yeah. Yeah, we're there. You drive 30 minutes anywhere, you're going to come to a little town that's not the, the case here. And that's why I, I really believe that there's something out there. And I believe in a lot of these stories because there's just, I mean, we don't know. There's just yeah. no people out there. Yeah, well, that the, the, the area that it has to, to hide and then you have just the historical record. You know, you mm -hmm. have the na all the natives, right. all every tribe yeah. from Alaska all the way down to South America. Mm -hmm. They all have some kind of a hairy man story. Yeah. And you can't tell me that, you know, the Inuits up in northern Alaska were able to tell people down in Mexico <laughs> about right. the big hairy man. You know, I mean, it just, it's it's just mind boggling. There has to be something to it. Um, yeah. It's just crazy that they've been able to go this long without being discovered. I, I Kudos to them. They're, they are right. the hide-and-seek champions of the world. <laughs> they are. <coughs> they are. So, yeah, my, my takeaway from this is, especially if you're camping with your family, you're out in the middle of nowhere, uh, you need to be prepared. You need to be able to defend yourself, your family, from animals, bears, wolves, coyotes, um, to Bigfoot, to just crazy people that are out there. Yeah, I, I think that the biggest weapon you can have going into any situation like that is knowledge yeah. uh, and education. You know, if you're going to carry a gun, know how to use it, know how yeah. it works, know how to take it apart, clean it, put it back together. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily have to be blindfolded like in the movies, right. but have a good working knowledge of, of how it works, what its capabilities are, you mm -hmm. know, what kind of ammo are you carrying and what can that ammo, you know, what what's the biggest animal that I think I can take down with that, you know, humans included yeah. with, with that ammo. And it's just educate yourself and, and, you know, forewarned is forearmed. Yeah. 
And uh, at the very least, bring bear spray. I, I think that a firearm is better. I think both is great. Um, what do you think would happen if you just point blank, just maced a Bigfoot with bear spray? I think, is well, the problem with Bigfoot, I think, is there's seldom just the one. Right. I think it. I think it's kind of like the raptor effect. If you, if there's a if you're seeing a Bigfoot, there's probably another one somewhere you don't see. Oh boy. Uh, but hypothetically, I think if you did mace a Bigfoot, I think it would probably run away. I don't. Yeah. I don't think it could handle that. Um, you know, I've been pepper sprayed, mm -hmm. and it, it sucks. And I know bear spray is is a little bit worse than pepper spray. Yeah. And I can't imagine um, any type of wild animal with, with heightened you know, sense of smell and that they probably have would be able to withstand that. I think it'd be effective because uh, Rob Roy was telling me how they have those kind of unhooded nose. They don't have a hooded nose, so it's like a big open nostril. So that would just go right in there. Yeah, I, th I think that it would probably be effective if you could get a good, yeah. a good facial shot on one. Uh, and, and that's, you know, like I said, that's just if it was just the one Bigfoot, yeah, and it was giving you problems, I think it would probably save your butt at least for a little bit. Uh, but if there was another one mm -hmm. like behind you or something that you didn't see, you might be in trouble. And if it was big and bad enough, I, I don't know. Uh, people in Kodiak have told me that bear spray is ineffective against the big giant uh, brown bears over there that people have. Uh, even with sometimes it doesn't work against black bears like they'll spray them and it'll just like ignore it And it's so angry. It'll just run right through it and tear the person apart. Yeah Well, you yeah. hear the stories of, of, of humans in, in extreme situations oh, being, right. being able to do amazing things You know, they get pepper spray taste shot whatever yeah. and they're still, you know, they're focused on their goal I've and seen I, those videos. Yeah, where they just blow, I, blow I think off. I think animals are capable of the same thing yeah. if they're angry hungry or just Honry enough, I think they can power yeah. through a lot. Um, you know, ever I think anybody out there that's hunted has probably shot an animal, and the the animal's dead, but he doesn't know it yet, and he runs off and, yeah. and dies somewhere else. So I think it's it's entirely possible to uh, <clears throat> to injure an animal or incapacitate an animal uh, and still have them function at least for a little while and enough mm -hmm. to do damage to you or, or your family. Yeah, yeah, you would need a a really good central nervous system shot or like a major like shoulder shot that would keep it from moving. Yeah. Well, one thing, you know, in law enforcement, we always um, talked about and trained for uh, when you're dealing with a, a target moving towards you. And I assume the same would, would uh, apply to a Bigfoot is, um, you know, we're just machines at the end of the day. You know, right. we, we have moving parts and uh, if certain parts can't move then certain functions get... Um, eliminated so a lot of times uh when you're dealing with with a human target uh you'll want to go for the pelvic girdle stitch the pelvic girdle with a few shots okay. uh in hopes of breaking the pelvis mm -hmm. and if your pelvis goes or a leg goes then you can't walk and you're immobilized uh so i assume that the same would apply to a bigfoot light target as well yeah shoot it right in the cock the <laughs> <laughs> so anyways Tune into Alaska Watch, and I'll put a link up for his channel. But uh, we'll see you guys next week.